Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and you're tuned in to Madden 18 on EA Sports. Every wide receiver in the NFL wants to be a top target, and two players will be trying to be that today. It's Marshall's Giants going up against Jeffrey's Eagles. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Okay, Larry, thank you. We are just off I-95 at the home of the Eagles, Lincoln Financial Field on the south side of Philadelphia. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago, boy, the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying fly, Eagles, fly, as they get ready to match up with Eli Manning and the New York Giants. Hello, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon God. As we get set here, Charles, we talk about wide receivers. You know, Larry mentioned it in the open, but that's a big spot to look at here in this one. I think you identified it perfectly because these guys have such an impact on the game nowadays because they throw the ball more than ever. And whether they're throwing it short, medium, or long, can they snatch it out of the air and create even extra yardage with run after catch? As of this morning, summer officially over. It's time for autumn football, and we're underway on EA Sports. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Carson Wentz now bringing the Philadelphia Eagles onto the field. You called their game last week against Kansas City. How did he look? What did you think? I think he continues to ascend as a second-year quarterback. I've seen growth already both in the pocket and movement outside of it, although I wouldn't mind if he used his legs a little bit more to pick up a few more first downs running it. But all in all, he shows great patience, great poise, great presence in the pocket, and delivers pretty well downfield. The tough part for him right now is the running game's just not clicking. So he's getting a lot of pressure in his face. Now a first carry for LeGarrette Blunt. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. So under the category of, while it can't be us because we're not that good, but could you imagine if this was you? But Garrett Blunt, his first 1,000-yard season since, what, 2010, his rookie year, and 18 touchdowns in the regular season, <laughs> and no longer with New England. He is over 30 now. He turned 30 in December. I don't know if that played a factor, but, yeah, such a productive year, and then he's gone. Well, that just tells you this. Now he's going to be playing with a chip on his shoulder trying to prove something. And all the way down to the 29. It's a big play there for the Eagles. 41 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oh, look at the strength. No, no, no. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Well, think of it like you would a typical boxing match. The person is on his heels and absorbing blows is having a tough time. And that's what's happening to the defense right now because the offense is on his toes and punching. And there was another first down run right there. Pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now it's the all-purpose back. This is Darren Sproles. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. 
Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Eagles starters here, and Charles, earlier you mentioned that Wentz wasn't getting a whole lot of help from the rushing game. Well, you got Blunt, you got Sproles, Smallwood, but Blunt only played six snaps last week. And didn't have a single carry. I mean, that was the interesting part about the game against Kansas City is that Darren Sproles became the primary ball carrier and then, of course, catching it out of the backfield. Wendell Smallwood got a few carries in there sprinkled in. Donnell Pumphrey, he's on IR. Corey Clement, the undrafted free agent out of Wisconsin, he's made the team. Got a couple of plays on offense but didn't carry it. I think, again, Philadelphia is going to have to look at downsizing who's going to carry the football and make someone a primary because they've got to take some of the pressure off of Wentz throwing the ball downfield. And quickly, the starting 11 now for the New York defense. It's often the moves that don't get a lot of attention that may be the most valuable in the NFL, and Damon Harrison is an example of that. Four years with the New York Jets as a defensive tackle before signing as a free agent with the New York Giants in 2016, and he shored up the Giants' run defense. They became the number three run defense in the league, led by Harrison's attack up front. From the gun on third down, wins. And that is incomplete. The strong windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. And Sturgis able to knock it through. And the Eagles, they take a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive for them here on their home turf results in a field goal. Now that's the way you want to get things started. Your stadium, your crowd, you've got the ball. Put points on the board first and let everyone start to celebrate. Now it's Sturgis converted on the field goal. Now he'll send this one away on the kickoff. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. They'll be led out by their two-time Super Bowl winning quarterback, Eli Manning, in season number 14 now. Had another nice season a year ago. His sixth 4,000-yard campaign, but even more importantly, got his Giants back into the playoffs with an 11-5 mark after three straight losing seasons. to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. So here's the starting 11, and <laughs> the human highlight reel, Odell Beckham Jr., watch out for him. One of the few guys in the league that gets you and I out of our hotel rooms early to get here for pregame warm-ups and watch him go through his routine. He's absolutely amazing catching the football. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, they go to Perkins. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. They give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. So right now what I'm seeing, I'm seeing an offense just firing off the ball a lot quicker than they can react. And not only that, they're sustaining the blocks too. I'm seeing guys get six, seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact. He 
Here's Perkins on first down. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. Second down, Perkins, and he stopped immediately there. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. And the defense now for the Eagles. In 2016, the Eagles showed that they were going to be aggressive on defense. A lot of man coverage and send the pass rushers after the quarterback. I don't expect that to change at all in 2017, but they are looking for increased play from their cornerbacks to try to lock down some wide receivers. Yeah, the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. Now Manning. And he's got a man open. That's Marshall. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A good pick up there, a 22. Now this trio that New York has compiled, Brandon Marshall, Sterling Shepard, and of course Odell Beckham Jr., fits right into head coach Ben McAdoo's attack. They led the league in three wide receiver sets in 2016. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now a first carry here for Shane Vereen. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a four-yard pickup, and that is going to set up a third and one. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. They'll try to pick it up with Perkins. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. We ought to come up with a T-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulder square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now a play fake here on first down. His throw caught right around the six. 23 yards on the play. Now this trio that New York has compiled, Brandon Marshall, Sterling Shepard, and of course Odell Beckham Jr., fits right into head coach Ben McAdoo's attack. They led the league in three wide receiver sets in 2016. in his hands there couldn't hang on second down I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line 
but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. Second and goal from the seventh. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Now from back at the nine after that last play, this is third and goal. Now Manning. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Timmy Jernigan able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and it can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker Aldrich Roses for the field goal try. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And the kick by Rosas is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy, but you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense... I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. We'll see the Eagles on offense here again in a second, but Alshon Jeffrey and Torrey Smith, speaking of that offensive wide receiver, they're really starting to find a spark with Carson Wentz, aren't they? They certainly are, and it started back in the offseason when Carson Wentz had a passing camp that he held for the receivers and running backs in North Dakota. And it was the first time any of those guys had ever been to the Dakotas other than Torrey Smith, who had been to South Dakota one time. But trying to integrate them, big-time targets, great catch radius, Wanted to make sure the ball gets to them so they can make some plays downfield. They go play action here on first down. Gonna look deep for Jeffrey. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Dominique Rogers Cromarty. And he's able to take this one back to the 36 yard line. Oh, and I saw the pressure coming at him. That just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it. And the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy and can he step into a throw. And when you can't do that, oftentimes interceptions result. the giant offense now making their way back out onto the field and a methodical drive last time but they couldn't get that knockout blow they had to settle for three but you gotta like what they've been doing along the way right it's almost like the body blows the setup punch as you said they didn't get the knockout blow here but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession and the defense on the other side maybe a little gas yeah right? a little tired and if nothing else they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three they don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense so after the int it's manning Hits his target, the tight end, Will tie, And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch, it's second and eight. 
I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. They'll run it now out of the gun. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. From the gun on third down, Manning. And that's complete to the right side. It's Marshall. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Shotgun now for Manning. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26 yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. to Perkins and down inside the 15 shy of the 10 a really nice pickup of 14 yards and it moves the sticks getting the sense Charles are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game and why not what we're seeing so far working pretty well from them and here's the best part we always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on I think he likes natural light best The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with the football here as we begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. And here comes play number six on this drive. On first down, back to Perkins. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the eight yard line. second down and he's gonna go down sacked right around the 17 Brandon Graham in there to sack him for a loss of six 
And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Third and long for the Giants and Eli following the sack. Working from the gun, Manning. This will be caught at about the six. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. And they'll get 10 there, but it leaves them just short for fourth down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And Rosas puts this one through. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's six to three. So we're trading field goals here in the opening half. No breakthrough yet on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. And really, I like what I've seen from both of these defenses thus far. Both have been a little more aggressive than I expected. And I think that's reflected in what we see on the scoreboard, which is no touchdowns to this point. To the field goal. Here's Rosas to kick it away. Paul Turner now to return. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. The drive starts with a handoff to Blunt. And he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. one across the 35. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Well, how many times do we say in this game that speed kills and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty. Can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice game. to block here and he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41 yard line throw it. Wentz. Screen pass to Sproles. Only a yard there. Sniffed out well defensively and it brings up third. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. 
the blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner. Everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. Five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. From the gun, it's Wins. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Donnie Jones set to punt it away now in his 14th year in the NFL. Back deep for the Giants, Dwayne Harris. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. The Giants offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super <laughs> Throwing on first down is Manning. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. The Giants on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and nine to throw, it's Manning. Looking for Shepard deep. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield, but that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. The fourth-year man from LSU, Brad Wing, to punt it away. Back deep is Darren Sproles. Sproles so quick and agile. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Eagles take possession. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? First down, Wentz. Throw left side, complete. That's Burton. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. They'll run it here with Blunt. 
And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Six. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Now Wentz on third down. And he hits his man, Matthews. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. A Philadelphia first down wins finding Matthews. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Push his way forward here for a good little game. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. They'll run it now out of the gun. Breaks the tackle, he's got room to run. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 12 yards there as they move the chains. And that's how you run the football and run it successfully. Big time chunk of yardage picked up, but why? Offensive lineman won at the point of attack. They're leveraged way better than the defenders. The low man wins when you're getting underneath and trying to move people. That's exactly what happened on that play. The offensive line moved the defensive front, created space, and the end result, a fantastic run. Sproles. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Under four to go now as the clock runs, and they come up on second down. Play action to Sproles, Wentz. And his throw is incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver, and it's third down. The Eagles on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. False start, offense. on third down just one for three thus far this is third down and 12 working from the gun Wentz and over the middle it's LaFell and he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20 yard line they get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down 
They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And Sturgis able to knock it through, and that will tie things up at 6-6. Six, six. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs went to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. On first down, Manning. Throw here's incomplete. They were trying to get it there to Sterling Shepard. And now it's second down. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. to throw again. Manning. And he comes back with one complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A nice pick up there of 11 yards and it'll move the sticks. He's a rookie and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. and 10. Here's Manning. It's complete on the bubble screen. That's Shepard. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. The completion good for three and it's second down. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have the highlights of this first half, but he won't have touchdowns because we haven't had any to this point. But there's still time, though, partner. more and incomplete there a nice hit jars the ball free and brings up third down that's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw but the collision came at the exact time he's reaching to bring in the football really really well done decent offense just better defense i think you're right the giants on third down they've hit at 50 percent three of six to this point this is third and seven Here's Manning to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Shepard. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break.
Here's Brad Wing now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. We get a look now at the Giants' defense as they file into position. And three points surrendered on the last drive against them. They bent a little bit, but they didn't break. I like that, and that's not always wrong. We run into a lot of coordinators that talk about, well, if I give up three points, my whole day's ruined. <laughs> Actually, it's not. <laughs> Just giving up field goals usually gives your team a chance to win if you're playing good defense. <laughs> yeah, especially in the National Football League. Play action. Now wins. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Janoris Jenkins. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find the spot, and now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. And the Giants ready to come out now. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Manning now on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Coverage was very good that time. A nice job to smother him as the ball arrived, and that ensured an incomplete pass. And it keeps six points off the board. Second down following the incompletion. Manning going to give to Perkins on the draw. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Well, he came out ready to play. That's three tackles for a loss, Charles. We're only in the second quarter. And that's problematic for the guys trying to run offense because that means he's got a pretty good idea of what they're doing and is actually beating them to the point of attack and making those plays. Might have to think about some misdirection or something to try and get him away from the ball. The Giants on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and 11. Operating from the gun. Manning. He's going to be sacked. Back at the 23-yard line. And now the Eagles going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrich Rosas, for the field goal try. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. And the kick by Rosas is good. And they take the lead here as it's now 9-6. So the defense gets the pick. The offense, Charles, they go backwards, but they do get three points. Very happy to get the three, but you know who's happier? The defensive team on the other side. They shut them down after the turnover.
After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. The Giants' defense getting ready to go here. They had the interception last time led to a field goal. And kept points off the board against them as well. What a great way to end a drive. Take it away and set your offense up to put points on the board themselves. The only thing would have been better a touchdown. Now they'll be looking to get the stop and lead to that here on the next drive. across the 20 but only up to about the 21. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. to throw on second down. Over the middle to Smith. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. First down now, but the clock continues to move. On first and ten, here's Wentz. And this is Hurts with it, right side. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what do you got to do? You got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. Now Wentz throwing on second down. Got his man complete over the middle. Brad Smith. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. And welcome back. The offensive unit, they took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. And now a first down following that long gain. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. Going to look deep for Jeffrey. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. So this is what happens when you throw interceptions, that confident veneer that you have. It's chipped away a little bit. Maybe a little bit gun-shy throwing it around. Yeah, under-throwing him there, and you're right. Those interceptions maybe in the back of his mind. So second and ten here. Again, it's Wentz. It's complete. This is Brent Salad. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. The reception good for seven. It's third down. So we come upon halftime here with the visiting Giants out on top. As we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Eagles trail at home at halftime. The Giants will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Eagles heading out on their opening drive. Smith's by himself here, and he ends up at the 29-yard line before he stopped on the play. Giants have it at the nine. Jernigan's got the sack here, 
this ends up as a huge loss in yardage. Now following the interception, Graham's going to push his way to the QB here. This one ends up as a loss of six. After the pick, offense comes out now. Graham's got the sack here. This will go for a loss of eight. That'll do it from our EA Sports Studios. Let's send it back up to Brandon and Charles in Philadelphia. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. The return man here, Dwayne Harris. And yeah, he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21 yard line. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. They'll let Perkins carry to start the drive. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They go with Perkins again. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets them to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here, because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Second down following the run. Perkins on the give from Manning. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. They'll run again with Vereen. And he's brought down. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. 
Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So the offense has it first and 10. And they run with Perkins. He's dropped just inside the 20. A little second effort there, but couldn't find a whole lot of space. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. On the run, it's Perkins. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the pickup. And that'll bring up a third and one. The Giants on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. On the run, here's Vereen. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. They stick on the ground. Again, it's Vereen. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Shane Vereen, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. And the lead will grow by one more. So that drive in total, eight plays. And it was capped off by a 12-yard touchdown run. Rosas now to kick this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half, other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. They start on the ground here with Blunt. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now 
again. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage to be found. The Eagles on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and five. On play action, it's Wentz. And Jeffrey's got it. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A good pick up there of 20 yards. They've really been able to contain Alshon Jeffrey. That catch a rare exception in this game. And that's a feather in their cap because he's such a tone setter for his team on offense that they try and get him the ball early. And, of course, what comes after that is often and for them to limit him and him not catch a ball until the second half, it's a big reason why his team is behind on the scoreboard. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. From midfield, here's Wentz. And Selleck here, left side. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. They'll run it now out of the gun. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And I didn't know, what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> Now a carry for Blunt, and he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. That's a tremendous group effort there, because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that one. Yeah, especially on third and one, got to be in sync, and they were. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now it's Sproles. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on that run. And while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. Again, they'll run it. Again, it scrolls. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Make it now three tackles for a loss in this game, one for each quarter. And for a guy who played defense in college, I can just tell you that he's feeling very satisfied right now by what he's doing, but he's elated because he knows what he's doing is helping his team win the game right now, making some big-time plays, getting into the offense's backfield and spilling everything. The Eagles on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is going to be third and 13. Shotgun now for Wentz. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, 
great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short, no good, and this score will stay right where it is. And New York set to take the field. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. The drive starts with a run by Perkins. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. He already has two sacks to his credit. Now another tackle for a loss. And you know how you can always identify who was supposed to block him? They're the ones helping up the person who just got knocked to the ground with the ball, right? Whether it's a running play or a pass play, they've got to figure out a way to slow him down. Maybe you chip him with a second guy. Maybe you just out and out double him. Maybe you make sure you take the ball and throw it as far away from him as possible. Because right now, he is wrecking things for them. Looking for Marshall, but it's intercepted. Picked off with great anticipation. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. out for another drive comes LeGarrette Blunt. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case, really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. So after the INT, here's Wentz. Caught by the tight end Ertz. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And that's one of his advantages of a passer is now with his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. The best play callers in any league know how to break their tendencies. They study themselves, they self-scout, and they realize most of the time you don't call a draw play on first and 10. So every so often you insert that play just to make the defense think, even if it's not successful. Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. From the gun, it's Wins. His throw incomplete. LeGarrett Blunt was the intended target, and it's third down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. 
On third and long, it's Wentz. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. And Sturgis able to knock it through, and this is back down to a seven-point game. So it's a third field goal for him now, and he's accounted for all nine of their points thus far. And he's definitely keeping them afloat. But we say it so often, field goals are not going to win you games in the National Football League. They've got to find ways to start capitalizing when they get down near the red zone. Now it's Sturgis converted on the field goal. Now he'll send this one away on the kickoff. This is fielded at the goal line. Shoves him aside. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Eli Manning getting ready to go again on offense. The lead is theirs here in the third quarter, but it's really been the ground game that's been the recipe for success. You mean the spotlight isn't shining as brightly on the guy throwing it? No, it's the man behind him that's had a heck of a game. And that's really okay. That's actually what you're looking for. I mean, your pride tells you, hey, I want to be responsible. I want to throw a bunch of touchdown passes. But when you're able to run the football, typically speaking, your team's doing pretty well. And in this case, they're winning. We'll see if they have balance on this drive. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. I've yet to meet a wide receiver who likes to block more than catching the football, but the best ones understand that that's how they'll actually get more passes thrown to them if they help in the run game. And anytime you get a run of that yardage, that means the wide receivers did help. They get down to what a lot of people call the second level, the linebackers, or the third level where the defensive backs are, and they get out in front and put their bodies out there and create more space for their runners to gain the yardage. Now a play fake here on first down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Chris Long. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's the Giants with the football and also the lead as we get set to start quarter number four. Second down, here's Manning. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Evan Ingram, the tight end. And it's third down.
The Giants on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This will be third and 19. On play action, it's Manning. He's going to loft one deep left side here. He's got it at the 15. Touchdown, Giants. Odell Beckham, 76 yards. And the Giants add on to their lead. Charles, there aren't really any slow receivers, but there's fast and then really fast. He's really fast, and he showed off the afterburners there. And that he is because when he took off, I was thinking there is no chance that he can actually reach him with that pass. Yet he did, and he's still sprinting. And just think about what that does for everyone else on his team because his ability to stretch a field opens things up for the rest of the receivers on the team. Rosas now to add the PAT. And the lead is up to 14. A drive there of just four plays. And it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. Rosas now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. down Wentz throwing over the middle but it's incomplete Jordan Matthews the one he was looking for and that'll bring up second down ten yards still left on second down Wentz going to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Try to go back to Matthews there. And now it's third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Eagles on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and ten. Working from the gun, Wentz. And it's knocked away and incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's Donnie Jones now as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is Harris. Oh, a little 360. <laughs> nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And it'll be giant football first and 10. 
The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. about the 27-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Brandon's all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lenta. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. The Giants on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and ten. Manning going to throw. A screen here to Vereen. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take away. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some room to work. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. As many games as the two of us do, I would hope that one day we'll be able to solve this riddle. Why is it on a hot day that one team has more trouble with the heat than another? And especially when you can't stop a guy running the ball. You know it's September in the booth, though, when you and I have both removed our coats, and those <laughs> were gone in the first quarter. They were gone in the first quarter, and what we're watching now is a defense mentally giving in and sagging a little bit because they haven't been able to stop him. A handoff to Perkins, and he'll be brought down at about the 42. A gain of three, second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Uh, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. They'll run it now out of the gun. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. It's a six-yard pickup, but still a few chain links short, it appears, with fourth down coming up. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. Here's Brad Wing now as he's on to punt for New York. And now the first throw for the backup quarterback. And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. 
They fake the punt. It doesn't work out. Well, not only did they try to fake it, they put the ball in the arm of their punter, and it didn't work out. Not the quarterback. No. The, the punter. Oh, yeah. yeah and Risky. It, and it's so funny because when it works, genius. When it doesn't work, not so smart. Not so genius. In this case, not so genius, but I do admire that he went for it. Wentz now giving to Blunt on the draw. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. So no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Three yards remaining here on second down. To throw, it's Wentz. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well, and he didn't get that done on that play. The Eagles on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. Here it's third and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard and it brings up four. Well, that's pretty symptomatic about how things have gone here. That play was just shut down right from the start. And not going to give them a lot of confidence to help turn things around. Here's Donnie Jones now, as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. And now out come the Giants. Perkins on first down, and he'll get only a couple up to the 22. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. It's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. On play action. Now Manning. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Chris Long in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Third and long for the Giants and Eli following the sack. From the gun, it's Manning. And Ingram, whole 
nails it in. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And now running right through it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Again, they go to Perkins. A decent run there following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Three yards to go here on second down. Shotgun now for Manning. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Working from the gun, Manning. And his throw is incomplete. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. On the give, it's Perkins. And a solid run down inside the 30. And they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball. You often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Into the red zone now. Manning throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Evan Ingram was the intended target, and it's second down. And the offense. 
offense readies for play number 10 of this series. On second down, Perkins. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. They'll try to pick it up with Perkins. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrich Rosas, for the field goal try. Oh, look at this. A flip to the kicker. He's going to try to run for it. And they're able to pick up the first and keep possession. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. First and goal, Perkins. He showed some tough running, but they'll drop him at the five-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Perkins on second and goal. And he is in. Touchdown, Giants. Paul Perkins, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. Is it okay if I break one of our rules, partner, which is to never call a game over until it's over? Because this certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit crushing, wasn't it? And now you can, you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, I think you're exactly right. You could see them sag on their sideline, and I think this one might just be over. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays, and finishing it off with a touchdown run, Paul Perkins.
Rosas now to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Throwing on first is Wentz. Going underneath to Blunt. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down. Now Wentz. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of three, and that'll make it third and one. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. On play action, wins. Jeffrey reels it in over the middle. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. Throwing his wins. And this is caught at the end. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. A gain of 32 that time. And he'll indeed get him to the line and spike it here to stop the clock. So the false start will back them up five. False start offense. Again, it's Wentz. An unlucky number here, a loss of 13 on the play. And that'll make it third and goal. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Well, Charles, it's great to win at home in the NFL. When you win on the road, it's a little extra special, isn't it? It is because, let's face it, in most cases, you're not expected to go on the road and win in the National Football League. It just doesn't usually compute. So to get out there, get that done, and then head back to your city with one in, your, in the victory column, oh, that's a fantastic feeling.
So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Philly.